What's up, y'all? Ian here, Half Cut Garage. And if you're building a mini jet boat of any kind and you want to go full send like this, Then this is the video for you. I've got a couple little things that I would change if I had to rebuild this boat different. I'm gonna build another boat. I'll probably build multiple boats, I assure you. But if I had to build this one different, here's what I would do different. Let's get into it. Let's start with where I started and get her stripped down, motor taken out. We'll take it from there. Just boo into pieces. You see that? There's the stomp grate for everybody that's thinking I was kicking the piss out of it. This is where we hit the mountain. I got my welding hoodie on. Y'all be proud of me. Big old. You can't even see the half cut, Teddy. Couple of them ground up to trash. <laughs> Does that kind of put it into perspective now? That one's 10 feet. That one's six foot nine. I know, I'll explain that later. Anyhow, why is Mini Cut back in here? Well, we're done finally with that there puppy. At least by the time you guys see this, the other two episodes will be out. So I've got this one in here because we need to do new sheet of UM, UHMW on the bottom of this. I'll explain all that, but of course I gotta blow it apart. So bring it in here, let it warm up for a couple days, and then we'll start knocking it apart and uh, get to that. So hope you enjoyed the micro build. Hope you guys enjoyed that epic jet boat recovery. And until we get liquid water, Couple more odds and ends to do. Let's get at her. Here's a time lapse of it just boo into pieces. Okay, you guys remember when I did the micro build episode, I need my something for a straight edge here. Remember when I did the micro build episode and I was telling you guys about not getting my boat winterized properly and getting the bottom sealed up properly. Now you are going to be witness to what I'm talking about. Here you go. Try to do this. Somewhere that gives you some perspective on this. You see that? I could easily fit probably two, two or three fingers through there. No, it's a standard square tube. We're not all metric in Canada. Some of us are hanging on. But anyhow, you see all these. You see, I can stick my fingers in there. The ripples are all on the bottom, all in the section that held water. And then they're in between each bolt hole. Or the ripple, the, 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 yeah, the high spots are in the bolt hole. What happened was the water stayed in here and it froze and it pushed it out. And it held it out there all winter long and then it didn't return to its shape. And it's the same up here. It's hard to tell, but this is one big bubble here running lengthwise too. So we're gonna get her knocked off and see just how bad the bottom of this boat actually looks. There's the stomp grate for everybody that's thinking I was kicking the piss out of it. Mini jet stomp grate, I'll tell you. Thing's been awesome. So anyhow, you see, you can see here, 
You can see all the holes. I drilled this thing full of holes and squirted everything from DAP expanding foam to Gorilla Glue to whatever else. I got a couple more trips out of her. What was happening was every time I go up on step, this little crack here, this is where we hit the mountain, this chunk here would get air in and the ripples allow the air to travel all the way underneath the UHMW to the intake. Every time I drilled them holes and shoved her full of con uh, silicone, it would stop for a little while until I went jumping over rocks again, squished the silicone enough that it went through, probably sucked it up through my pump. So we'll get her spun around and start knocking the bottom off her. Hopefully all the bolts come out. I don't have help, so she's a one-man band as usual. camera's gonna pick that up. Kind of a big wow there. Another big crease right there. I don't know where we left off. It's cold in here. It's only minus five. I got the wood stove rocking, gonna warm it up. I haven't been in here for a couple of days, so I just let the wood stove go out. Thermal mass, I'll tell you. That big heated concrete slab. Yeah. Three days without a fire, four days without a fire, still getting down to minus 12, minus 14 at night, and it's still plus five in here, so that's not too bad. We'll burn a fire for a couple days, bring her back up to temperature. I'm talking really fast because I want to get this over and done with so you don't have to watch this, and away we go. We've got a couple cracks. Starts about there, so we'll grind back into there. Same thing back here, grind back into there. I won't do that one right away. I've got 5356 loaded up in the gun right now. So for ease, I am just gonna weld all my holes shut, re-drill and re-tap them, then trying to figure out the ones that I can drill and tap from the inside. All of them but these ones here. That's a big old dent. But these ones here, we're gonna leave and I believe I can do them from the inside, but all the other ones, our UHMW is pre-drilled, so, oh yeah, and there's this here too. Okay, so here's the original crack. This is the part I welded up when we come back to get us through the rest of the season. So, of course, I got glue silicone in there. It's gonna make for a really ugly weld, but I'm gonna grind that out too. We'll get all the holes welded up, we'll get that welded up, and then we'll switch wire and we'll go to 4043 to weld to the intake. I'm gonna get out of that. There's no nice way of showing this. I might set up a time lapse, so you might see a time lapse, you might not, because I don't, there's no, I gotta jam myself in there. I'm gonna do all the cracks first, and then I'll do that intake last. Whoa. 
I know. Welding all them holes. I thought about it. I thought about re-drilling, drilling back in the same holes. There was too many that were blanked off. Too much effort. Weld them all shut. We ground them all down. What would I change if I was going to do something different? Let me show you. As you can see, I'll bop back and forth. But my delta pad, which is this triangle piece right here, took one heck of a hit. I'll show you the pictures from underneath. There's spots where there's probably almost a quarter inch dip. We pounded a lot of it out, didn't show you that. Pounded as much out as I could. What would I do different? On the inside of this boat, I would put in another quarter inch piece triangle before I put the keel plate in all the way to the back. The keel plate would go all the way to the back, not stop where it does there. The crack was really wide open in between the two, less so where they met the intake. Mini jet intake, props to you man. That thing took a licking. The bottom of it, I had to grind it flat. It had big scars, chunks out of it, the whole nine yards, it helped. So, reinforce the delta pad. Next big area that took hits that you can't see is back in here. This section here is actually caved up fairly decent. I'm not too worried about it. The, the UHMW kind of flattened it out. What would I do there? I would actually lay a piece there, starting back over in this neck of the woods, and I would lay a piece on the outside. I don't know if I'd go quarter inch thick, something that allowed you to taper it. Either way though, to give you a little bit more beef. The stringers don't even show it, but there's, they're warped on either side. Third part I'd change is up in the front. These stringers are great. They work great, they stop short. You hit. Right in here is where I took the majority of my, my hit. The crack was from about here all the way up to the tip of where the floorboard rest is. What would I change here? Well, these are great. See the way the delta pad stringers come in? I would put another one here, and I would put another one there. Oh, you can't see my finger. I'd put another one here, and I would put another one there to help hold some of that from caving in. There's a pretty good groove there on either side of that keel strip in between that and the stringer. I hope that was some help. Hope you guys appreciate the input. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Maybe, I don't know where we're going with this. Maybe I'll put the motor back in before this video is done. I guess we'll see. Just kidding y'all. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Drop us a comment. Please, please, please. I need all your help to get the algorithm to pick me up and that stuff matters. Make sure you're watching the video to the end. Merch is going to be available. Check these out. We got new stickers. Not Carhartt hoodies, but we got hoodies coming. We got hats. We got t-shirts. We got tank tops for the ladies. We got some long sleeve shirts. First availability will be at the Fort Nelson Chamber of Commerce Trade Show May 6th and 7th, 2023 Fort Nelson Rec Center. Be sure to be there. First Hundred through the door each day are going to get a smaller version of this a hard hat sticker Thanks for watching next week next Wednesday the conclusion of this build We're going on a wild jet boat ride Cleto Creek style This Sunday see you there check that out Leaving our mark <laughs> <laughs> we need a longer barrel. <laughs>